to Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all fourth graders out there. Though everyone is welcome to tune in, this lesson is the second of this week's series, Lesson 7. My name is Valencia Smith and I'm a fourth grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my virtual classroom. Now, if you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it at www.tn.gov backslash education. You can still tune in to today's lesson if you haven't seen any of the others, but it might be more fun if you first go back and watch our other lessons since we'll be talking about things we previously learned. <clears throat> we will do a quick review of yesterday's section of the story. Today, we will continue to read through the Legend of Sleepy Hollow set post or after the Revolutionary War. Before we get started, to participate fully in our lesson today, you will need your setting and Ichabod Crane papers from yesterday, three new pieces of paper, <clears throat> explanatory paragraph about the setting from yesterday, if you have it, a pencil, and also, the student packet for ELA Grade 4 Lesson 7, which can be found at www.tn.gov backslash education. Our lesson focus for today is to describe the characters using details from the text, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. In your independent practice, you're going to write an explanatory paragraph to describe how the author describes two characters, Ichabod Crane and Brum Bones. Okay, let's begin. <clears throat> Remember yesterday, we talked about what a legend is. Here's the chart behind me. A legend usually focuses on he heroic individuals or fantastic creatures and describes an exciting adventure. It may have some basis in historical fact and includes some supernatural events. As we get further into the story, we will think about the, what elements make up this legend, make this story a legend. We will begin with me showing you how to use the words the author uses to think about the characters. Then, there will be time for you to practice writing before the about the characters on your own with my support. Finally, I will assign you independent work that you can complete after the video ends. This framework will follow the same structure as week one's lessons. As a quick review of our story so far, I'm going to read you the explanatory paragraph I wrote from yesterday. For those of you who weren't able to join us, it will catch you up on the setting. For those of you who have your paragraph, think about how yours is similar or different from mine. <clears throat> Sleepy Hollow is the setting of the story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. It is located on a river and is described as nestled in the crook of a crow, just beyond the village and hidden between high rolling hills. Sleepy Hollow is very different in the day and night. In the day, the birds, brook, and wind make people peaceful noises, but the noises change at night. Pounding hooves haunt the night. The author shares a Native American legend that provides more information about the setting. In the legend, a wise man enchants Sleepy Hollow to protect it from a curse. But the curse is broken during the Revolutionary War when a cannonball strikes and kills a soldier by blowing off his head. The soldier roams each evening in Sleepy Hollow looking for his head. Finally, the setting moves forward 10 years to one schoolhouse, school, to one room schoolhouse that teetered on the edge of Sleepy Hollow. The setting of Sleepy Hollow developed by the author is very interesting, and I can't wait to hear about the, how the characters move around in the setting of Sleepy Hollow. I want you to take a moment. How is yours the same or different from mine? Good. After reading mine out loud, I think I would like to go back and add some information about the actual date. Good writers are always trying to make their writing better. Because I remember the setting is 10 years after a battle of the Revolutionary War, or the war Americans fought with Great Britain, I think I would add the date of 1785 to my setting description. During our reading today, 
we will capture details about two characters in our story based on the words of the author. Characters are the people in the story. We want to think about what we know about the characters by the details the author provides us. Go ahead and write Ichabod Crane at the top of one sheet of paper. On the second sheet of paper, write Brum Bones. We will use these as we read the story. Here's how you spell Ichabod Crane, and there's Brum Bones. <clears throat> okay, let's begin. Washington Irving's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, as retold by Kim T. Griswell, part two. Ten years pass. The soldier's flesh and bones turn to dust, but stories of his haunting grew. Into, his haunted, into this haunted hollow came a scarecrow of a man with ears as big as saucers and a tiny head that bobbled atop a spindly neck. Long arms dangled from his shirt sleeves. When he walked, his baggy clothes flapped as if a strong wind blew around his stick thin frame. His name was Ichabod Crane. He came to Terrytown to teach in the one room schoolhouse that teetered on the edge of Sleepy, Ho <coughs> excuse me, Sleepy Hollow. Ooh, is it getting creepy already? Let me read this again. The soldier's flesh and bones turn to dust. What do you think that means? My guess is that he is buried and rotting away. Remember, this is the soldier from the legend who rode around at night looking for his head. Hmm. Let's look at our definition of legend. It's right here behind me. If he is dead and looking for his head, what part of the definition does this fit? Which one of these? If you remember from our first lesson, the word supernatural means like ghosts. So if the soldier looking for his head as a ghost is one of the characteristics that makes this a legend. And here's our word, supernatural. Now, let's talk about the introduction to Ichabod Crane. I want you to write these words on your Ichabod character paper with me. I have Scarecrow of a Man. I can just imagine Ichabod as a scarecrow, can't you? Ears as big as saucers. Saucers are the little plates that go under a teacup. Can you imagine him with ears that stick out as far as little plates or saucers? A tiny head that bobbled atop a spindly neck. Spindly. Have you heard this word before? When you walk upstairs, the wood pieces that line the stairs and protect you from falling are called spindles. The author is telling us that his neck was long and thin by comparing them to the spindles. Long arms dangled from his shirt sleeves. Dangled means to hang down to his arms, so his arms were hanging down from his shirt sleeves. I imagine this, that his sleeves did not come to his wrists. Baggy clothes flapped and stick thin frame. Putting the last two together makes me think he was so thin that he couldn't find clothes to fit him. The author packed this paragraph with, with many phrases to physically describe Ichabod. Take one minute and do a quick sketch of what he looked like based upon his physical description. Now, let's look at the artist's illustration of Ichabod. He was a scarecrow of a man, big ears as big as saucers, a tiny head that bobbled on a spindly neck, long arms dangled from his sleeves, 
I thought of this one a little differently from the illustrator. The illustrator has the sleeves going past his wrist. Baggy clothes, flapped. Interesting. The illustrator made the clothes more form-fitting or not baggy. Stick, thin frame. Yes, he looks very skinny beneath those clothes. Ichabod Crane settled quickly into a routine. His green, glassy eyes watched his small band of students to catch them in the slightest infraction. A few minutes tardy, which means late, into the corner. A misspelled word, spell it gain 100 times. Toys in the classroom, pop guns, whirly gigs, little paper game cocks, went straight in on the teacher's desk. And no amount of pleading could convince Ichabod Crane to return his students' treasures. Have you ever heard of pop guns or whirly wigs and little paper game cocks? All of those are toys that children during the American the Revolutionary War time would play with. Based upon how Ichabod treats the students, what can you infer about him as a teacher? Infer means to use what you know with what the text says. Yes, I agree. I would describe him as strict. Let's add that to our chart. I think he is strict because if you are late and you go to the corner, if you misspell a word, you write it a hundred times. Also, he would not give back any of the toys he captured in class. In the next paragraph, see what you can infer about this time of year. Remember, use what you know with what the text says. At the end of the school day, Ichabod Crane headed to the attic room he rented from former Van Ripper. The walk took him along the stream, its edges just starting to, to crisp with ice. Frigid wind well through the woodland and stung his saucer-shaped ears. He shrugged his coat higher on his shoulders, which would only serve to make his bony wrist colder. What did you notice about the time of year? Yes, I think, I think that it's probably late fall also. The author mentions that the stream's edge are starting to turn to ice. Also, the author uses the word frigid to describe the wind. I know frigid means cold especially since the wind stung Ichabod's ears. Did you learn anything new about Ichabod? I heard that he rents a room from former Van Ripper. Add that to your chart about Ichabod. During the Revolutionary War time period, it was common for someone to rent a room in a house. Let's move on to our next section. Twilight fell. The locals called it the witching hour. As the sun dipped below the hills, trees turned to ghouls. Bushes rustled and leaves crackled. With every ominous sound, Ichabod's ears turned. His tiny head bobbled and swayed, first one way, then another. Shivers crept like bony fingers up his spine. All Ichabod could think to do was to sing psalms or songs. He hoped the words would drive the shadows back to where they belonged. Twilight fell. Let me reread that sentence and see if we can determine the meaning of twilight. Twilight fell. The locals called it the witching hour. As the sun dipped below the hills, trees turned to ghouls. What do you think twilight means? I heard the sun is dipping behind the hills, which makes me think twilight means late in the evening, right before dark. I've heard more examples of descriptions of legends. The word uh, supernatural, which is on our chart. Did you hear the word witching hour and ghouls? Those are other examples of supernatural. Omnius is another interesting word. The text says, with every omnius sound, Ichabod's ears turned. I think omnius means 
It is a scary sound because Ichabod kept turning his head to hear the sounds and shivers ran up his spine. What can we infer about Ichabod from this paragraph? Do you think he's afraid? That is what I was thinking. Especially because he hoped his songs or songs would scare away the shadows. Let's add that to our chart. Scared at Twilight. He hoped the words would drive the shadows back to where they belonged. It did not work. As Ichabod rounded a corner, a great black beast thundered down the road. Out of the way, cried a voice. Mischief is afoot, which means happening. This night, more horses followed, breath steaming, hooves pounding. Ichabod ran, his coat tail flapping, not stopping to breathe until he slammed the door of his attic room behind him. Oh, that was interesting. Do you remember where we, where we heard about horses' hooves? In our first lesson, do you remember that horses' hooves were heard at night? And we talked about how scary that was. Why do you think Ichabod slammed the door? I inferred here that Ichabod is still scared because he did not stop and was out of breath, so he slammed the door to keep something away from him. Now, as we read this next section, listen to how Ichabod is useful to the valley's formers. That weekend, Ichabod made himself useful to the valley's formers. He pitched hay into wagons, hammered nails into sagging fences, and stacked wood beneath slanted sheds. As he worked, his greedy ears gathered gossip to carry from farm to farm like corn in a basket. Now, how does Ichabod make himself useful to the farmers? Very good listening. He pitched hay, mended fences, hammered nails, and stacked wood. I'm going to add to the chart, help the valley's farmers. Now, you might have heard of personification in school. It's where an author gives human qualities to something that is not human. I'm going to reread a sentence. See if you hear an example where something that is not human is given human qualities. As he worked, his greedy ears gathered gossip to carry from form to form like corn in a basket. How interesting. His greedy ears gathered gossip. Can ears gather, be greedy, or carry? Nope, but it makes the writing so much more interesting. The author is telling us that Ichabod likes to gossip by the interesting way he makes the ears seem human or uses personification. Let's connect some thoughts here. Why did Ichabod help farmers? You got it, he likes to gossip. We certainly need to add that to our notes on our chart. So here I added the word gossips at the bottom of the chart. We'll continue. Brum Brown's another character is about to be introduced. The foreign wives flock to him like hands, clucking at tales of their neighbor's doings. When the school teacher told them of the horseman he'd seen, one portly or large good wife shook her head. Aye, that would be Brum Brown's and his gang, she chuckled. The young man is well-loved round these parts, thought of, though he's a bit of a prankster. What do we know about the former's wife based on this section and why? Yes, they enjoy gossip as well. The author compares them to hens. Have you ever seen hens? They like to stay together. So when Ichabod is around, they stay around to hear him gossip. One farmer's wife tells Ichabod who the horseman was that scared him. Who was it and why did she think that? Good. She says it was Brum Bones because he is a prankster. So now let's start adding to our chart about Brum Bones.
It says, the former's wife said Brum Brums was the horseman and crankster. Now I want you to listen for more characteristics of Brum Bones. Brum Bones, if you bought eyebrows switch, a rather odd surname. Surname just means your last name. Aye, the good wife waved a hand. Just the nickname he's earned for his strong, broad shoulders. The young man's family name is Van Brunt. Brum, if the women were to be believed, was the most eligible bachelor of Sleepy Hollow. With his Herculean strength, he could raise a born in a single day. He was wrestling champ of the county as well. And when seated on a horse, no rider could catch him. Ichabod had seen this type before. Every village along the Hudson River had his favorite son. They were all the same, red faced and good humored with brains no bigger than the peas they planted. That boy loves only two things, said the good wife his horse Dale De Daredevil, and young Katrina Van Tassel. Whew, we have a big introduction to Brum Brums in this section. I'm going to reread one of the paragraphs that I want us to dig into. Brum, if the woman were to be believed, was the most eligible bachelor or unmarried man of Sleepy Hollow. With his Herculean strength, he could raise a building or build a building, build a barn in a single day. He was wrestling champ of the county as well. And when seated on a horse, no rider could catch him. How do the women feel about Brum? They think he's an eligible bachelor, which means that he was unmarried and did not have a girlfriend. I know the women talked about him because the text says, if women were to be believed and the word most was put in front of eligible bachelor, he was the most eligible bachelor, meaning of all the unmarried men, they liked him most. I think I'm going to add that to the chart. <clears throat> Herculean, wrestling champ, and fast horse rider. What did we hear about Brum's athletic ability? Did you hear the author use the word Herculean? Yes, because we added that to our chart already. Because I know Hercules was very strong, this helps me to know more about how strong, especially since he could build a barn in a day. We also added Wrestling Champ to the chart to show how strong he was and what made him an eligible bachelor. I know he was a fast rider on a horse too because it said no rider could catch him. So we added that to our chart as well. I notice the author uses what Ichabod thinks of Brum to give us details about Brum. Brains no bigger than the peas they planted. Why do you think Ichabod means by this? If you know how small a pea is, it's tiny. Ichabod thinks Brum has a tiny brain. Because of this, I can infer that Ichabod probably thinks Brum is not very smart because he says his brain is tiny. So let's add that to our chart. One last sentence tells us two things that are important about Brum. That boy loves only two things, said the good wife, his horse Daredevil and young Katrina Van Tassel. Add that to your chart. He loves his horse Daredevil and loves young Katrina Van Tassel. I'll write it as you write it. Now, let's move on to our guided practice. <clears throat> wow, look at all we've learned about the two characters, Ichabod and Brum, today. We have thought deeply about how the author is providing us with details about each character. I'm anxious to see what happens with these two. Now, I want us to prepare to write about what we have captured about the characters. 
Just like the last lesson, we're going to write an explanatory paragraph. However, today's paragraph will be about the characters. Think about how the author, Kim Griswell, described the characters in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. We will start together and you will finish it on your own after the lesson. Let's look back at our character charts, one for Ichabod and one for Brom. Do you see a way we might organize this information about Ichabod? Do you see how we can group our thoughts? Jot some ideas in the margin about how they might be grouped. The first few on Ichabod are about how he looks, so you should write looks for those. Then I see that the author moved to the ways Ichabod acts, or things he does. Write acts by those. So far, we've divided Ichabod's details into two categories. What he looks like and how he acts are things he does. Now let's do the same thing with Brown. I'm wondering how we might group these. Read your list and see what you think. Make notes in your margin as you have ideas. This one was a little bit more difficult. Let's see. These three stand out to me. Brown's physical ability. They think he horseman and prankster, Herculean, wrestling champ, and fast horse rider. Put a bracket around those and put physical ability. And then put a bracket around the two things that Brum loves, Daredevil and Miss Katrina Van Tassel. Now, we have to consider our categories. I know one of the first things I need to do to write my paragraph is to write an introduction. Take a moment to try to craft an introduction for the prompt. Write an explanatory paragraph about how the author Kim Griswold describes the characters Ichabod Crane and Brum Bones, using detail from the story. Say it out loud until you get it how you want it. Now let's see what mine looks like. The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, as retold by Kim Griswold. The author presents two main characters, Ichabod Crane and Brum Bones. Ichabod Crane is a thin scarecrow of a man with a tiny head and a spindly neck. The author says his ears are as big as saucers. Ichabod is a strict teacher who is also known to be a gossip when riding his horse alone at twilight. He was scared of the shadows that he, that he raised to his attic room and locked the door. Think about how you might put together sentences about how Ichabod acts or what he does. Say it aloud to yourself as you're writing yours. Now let's move on to our independent work because it's your turn to write. I want you to finish our paragraph by describing Brum Bones and writing a concluding sentence. You have three ways for your chart to describe him. How he sees himself, I mean, I'm sorry, how others see him, his physical ability, and things he loves. Be sure to use details we discuss from the text. Don't forget to think about how you might transition between each of your explanations. Also, be sure to add a concluding sentence. Boys and girls, I enjoyed reading about the characters in The Legend of Sleepy Hollow with you today. Thank you again for inviting me into your home, and I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Bye-bye.